Back down to our top story here, the tragic death of Lolita at Miami Seaquarium. And Louie joins us by phone. Louie, you've been covering Lolita for so many years. Go ahead. Yeah, so this really took everybody by surprise because the effort was on full court to get her back to her natal waters in the Salish Sea. Uh, as a matter of fact, she had just recently begun her training to be able to swim onto the stretcher, which would be necessary, a necessary step to get her to uh, ready for transport from the Miami Seaquarium uh, back to the Pacific Northwest. The new owners of the Seaquarium, the Dolphin Company, had already agreed to this earlier this year and announced that they were willing to let her go back. And uh, the main focus was always her health, getting her health optimal to be able to make and survive this journey. And she seemed to be doing really well. I was just at the Seaquarium with her in her habitat in May, and she seemed strong and vibrant. But there were warning signs. Uh, I think as, as early as last night, a crane appeared uh, just outside the whale stadium, and that's always a very ominous sign. We're going back to the 1980s when her, her tank mate Hugo died. There was that infamous photo that appeared, obviously, in the media everywhere of Hugo being lifted out of that habitat after he died with the cranes. So every time a crane appeared near her habitat, um, that was the fear that, um, that she was not doing well. But everyone was pulling for her. Uh, this was actually something that could, was almost about to reach the finish line. Everything was in the hands of the regulatory agencies and NOAA and the USDA and the Army Corps of Engineers to see if this plan was actually plausible. The land for her sea pen in the Salish Sea had already been speculated, and the, the efforts were on to actually make this happen. And everybody thought that, oh, my God, this could finally happen. And all of a sudden, two days ago, she took a turn for the worse, and her health began to decline. The vets went in. They checked on her. They couldn't bring her back. They couldn't stabilize her. And apparently she died uh, this afternoon and shortly after 4 o'clock. The preliminary diagnosis seems to be uh, renal failure. Uh, again, she's a 57-year-old orca, the second, living, the second oldest living orca in captivity ever. Uh, and uh, she has defied all odds up until this point. And many people thought that she was really going to make this through and be able to have that fairy tale happy ending that so many people around the world wanted for her. Yeah, the orca that was a star attraction in captivity at Seaquarium dead at the age of 57. Louis, thank you so much. Much more coming up on Local 10 News tonight at 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And right now we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with much more news in just a couple of minutes.